Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today, I'll be showing you how to make a modern tank top. For this tank, we decided to go with the sleek, overlapping collar, clean rib combo to great effect, and I couldn't be happier. Speaking of, if you want to crochet something to make you happier, you're in the right place. We have got hundreds of modern crochet designs with more coming on the way, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 250 grams of yarn, and that's 300 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure, and there is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite pasta sauce. Now, let me start off by saying that I absolutely love pasta, so picking just one is a little hard, but I think I'd have to say Alfredo. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch, single crochet, and half double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain on to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook, and we're all going to start by making a chain that reaches from 1 inch underneath our underarm down to where I want the bottom of this top to be, so cropped or long. I want mine to be long, so I'm going to need 16 inches or 41 centimeters, and that's going to be a chain of 65 for me. Now that we have our chain, we're going to be doing a half double crochet row. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, we just want the height. And what we're going to do is yarn over, insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook, pull through, and once we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. There's our first half double, let's do one more. Yarn over, insert your hook into that following chain, pull through, pull through all three, and continue to put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. So now that we put one half double crochet into every chain, we should have one left, and now we're going to do an increase of two. So all that is, is inserting into that last chain with one half double crochet, and then into that same last chain with a second half double crochet, and that is our increase. And now our row sequence is going to be back loop half double crochets and back loop slip stitch rows. So our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So to work our way up to that row, we're just going to chain one and flip our work. Now for this portion of our piece, our back loop slip stitch rows aren't going to have any increases or decreases, so all we're going to do is find the last stitch from our previous row, insert our hook in through that back loop, and when we have those two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. Let's do the next one. Insert your hook into that following stitch's back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything, and continue to do this till you reach the end of the row. And a quick tip that I have when it comes to doing our back loop slip stitches is once we finish every stitch, make sure that we're not accidentally tugging too tightly on our working yarn, otherwise our falling rows are going to be too tight to work into. So now that we've made our way all the way down with our row 2, which was our back loop slip stitch row, now we're going to switch back to doing our half double crochet rows, but now they're all going to be within the back loops. So from here we're going to chain 2, that still doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain, we are going to flip our work, and then we're going to find the last stitch from our previous row, and then half double crochet into that back loop, and that's it. We're going to be putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one just so we can increase together once more. And we made our way all the way down with our row 3, leaving that last stitch just to do another increase of two back loop half double crochets together. 
sew into that last back loop, insert with your first half double crochet, and then into that same back loop with your second half double crochet. Now from here, it's going to be a repeat of these two rows that we have. So back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and a back loop half double crochet that ends in an increase of two. So from here, just to do this together, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And we're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have a portion that can stretch, keeping in mind that it does stretch quite a bit, from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm, making sure that we end right after a back loop slip stitch row. And then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I am back with the first half of my underarm portion. I have a total of four rows and my width is just about an inch or two centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we have just a little bit more of an underarm to do just so we can get a really smooth curve that works all the way up to our shoulder. So from here, since we all should have ended right after back loop slip stitch row, since we're along the bottom, we're gonna chain two, flip our work and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving that last stitch. So I've just worked my way all the way up with my back loop half double crochet. And now into that last stitch that we left, we're now gonna be doing an increase of three. So into that last back loop, we are going to insert with one half double, with our second half double, and then with our third half double crochet. And now from here, we are going to need to increase into our back loop slip stitch row as well. So how we're gonna do that is right after our increase of three, we're going to chain two. That first chain will count as a stitch, that second chain will count as our turning chain, and then we're gonna flip our work. Now from here, we're going to find that second chain from our hook and insert only into that back loop. So we're gonna skip that close chain, into that following chain, insert into the back loop with a slip stitch, and then that's it. We're gonna to continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then from this point, we're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until this portion can now stretch from mid underarm over to the front of our body, so around where our bra strap or our tank top strap would be. And then I'll meet you guys back right after back loop half double crochet row. All right, you guys, so I am back with the entirety of my underarm portion now. I have a total of seven rows and my width is just about two inches or five centimeters unstretched. Now from here, since we all should have ended right after back loop half double crochet row, we're now going to make a chain that is in multiples of three that reaches up to their collarbone. So I'm going to make a chain that is about two and a half inches or six centimeters, or that's gonna be a chain of 12. And now that we have our chain, we're going to do our following row in our row sequence, which is going to be a slip stitch row. So from here, we're going to chain one into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch, and we're gonna to continue to put one slip stitch into every chain and then meet back at the body. And now that we've made our way back down towards the body, what we're going to do from here is now back loop slip stitches. So twist your work if you have to, find the last stitch from our previous row, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then from here, it's going to be our half double crochet row. So at the end of this row, chain two, flip our work, and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And I'll meet you back when we have just three stitches left. So I've just made my way all the way down with my back loop slip stitch row, and then all the way back up with my back loop half double crochet row, leaving one, two, three stitches. And now we're gonna be doing a decrease of three back loop half double crochets. So how we do that is yarn over, insert your hook into that third to last back loop, pull through into that following back loop, pull through, and then into that last back loop and pull through. Now all together, we should have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook. So just yarn over, pull through all five, and that is how we do our decrease of three back loop half double crochets. And now from here, we are going to need to do a decrease into the back loop slip stitch row as well. So chain one and flip our work. And now to do our decrease, this is just gonna be a decrease of two back loop slip stitches. So find the last stitch from our previous row, insert, pull through, find that following stitches back loop. Once we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, it's just gonna be a repeat of these two rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that ends on a decrease of three, and then a back loop slip stitch row that starts with a decrease of two, 
until this reaches mid chest. Now I'm just going to continue on with these two rows and I'll meet you guys back right after a half double crochet row so that we can do a middle row together. So I am back with the decrease portion of my front panel. Now I made my way all the way over to the middle of my chest and I ended right after my back loop half double crochet row. I have a total of 19 rows and this width is just about four inches or 10 centimeters, still unstretched. And now we're going to do our middle row, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So from here, all we're going to do is chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then at the end of this row, we're gonna get started on the other half of our front panel, which is basically gonna mirror everything that we just did. So start by putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last stitch so that now we can do an increase of three half double crochets instead of a decrease. So I've just finished up my middle slip stitch row that didn't have any increases or decreases into it. At the end of the row, I chain two, flip my work and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch leaving that last stitch so now we can do an increase of three. So what we're gonna do is yarn over, insert our hook into that last stitch's back loop with one half double, with a second half double, and then now with a third half double crochet all into that last back loop. And now from here, we're gonna be doing another back loop slip stitch row, but that's gonna have an increase as well because we did a decrease into these slip stitch rows. So how we're gonna do our increase is chain two. Now, just like how we did the underarm, that first chain is gonna count as a stitch. That second chain is gonna count as our turning chain, and then we're going to flip our work. And now from here, making sure that we're inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop, we're gonna insert into there with our first back loop slip stitch, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then that's it. Now from here, we're just gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows on this side, of our middle row. So making sure that we're not counting that middle row. And then also making sure that that last back loop slip stitch row that we have doesn't start with a decrease because we didn't do a decrease into here. So I'll meet you guys back once when I have the total amount of rows all finished up, and then we can do the underarm together to finish up our front panel. All right, so I am back with the increased side of my neckline. Now, my total width is just about six inches or 15 centimeters, still unstretched, and now we're going to do our underarm portion together. So first things first, we're going to need to make sure that we are inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made along this side. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a chain of 12. So along this end, I counted down 12 stitches and inserted my stitch marker. Now our last row should have been a back loop slip stitch row, remembering that this row, we shouldn't have done an increase, but since we should be along the bottom, we're gonna be putting one half double crochet into every stitch, leaving three stitches right before our stitch marker so that now we can do a decrease of three. All right, so I've just made my way all the way up with my back loop half double crochet row, and I have left one, two, three stitches right before my stitch marker, and now we're gonna do a decrease of three together. So since we already know how to do that, this is going to be a quick refresher. So start with a yarn over, Insert your hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, into the second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that third back loop, pull through. Once we have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all five, chain one, and flip our work. And now we're going to be basically mirroring the second half of our underarm portion that we did on this side. So since we did an increase into this back loop slip stitch row, we're gonna start this back loop slip stitch row with a decrease as well. Now, just to do the first one, we're going to insert our hook in through the last stitch from our previous row's back loop, pull through into that following stitch's back loop. Once we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then that is it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as the second half is our underarm portion when we started this piece off. So if you guys have my numbers, I did a total of three of these types of rows. So I will meet you guys back when I have a total of three of these rows all finished up. We should end right after back loop half double crochet row and then we'll finish off the front panel by closing off with our underarm. Okay, so I am back with the first half of my underarm portion. Our last row should have been a back loop half double crochet row 
And now we're going to finish off our front panel with the second half of our underarm. So when we started off this piece, we didn't do any increases or decreases into the back loop slip stitch rows. So since our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, we're just going to be putting one stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way down. Once we reach the end, we're going to chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two, because on this side, we did an increase of two. Alrighty, so I am back. I've just finished up my back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. And I've made my way back up with my back loop half double crochet row, leaving the last two stitches. And now we're going to do a decrease of two. So yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then also into that last back loop, pull through. Once we have all four of those loops on our hook, we're just going to yarn over, pull through all four. And then from here, we're going to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows that we started off our underarm portion with. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a total of four of these rows. So I will meet you guys back when I have a total of four of these rows and that will be the end of my underarm portion. So right after that, I'm going to do a chain up of one and cut and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up the entirety of my front panel. Now my total width is just about seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters, that's still unstretched. And now from here, we're gonna get started on the back panel, which is going to start off the same way that the front panel did. So we're gonna start by making the same chain as our front panel's underarm with the same amount of rows and the same type of increases as our underarm, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so now that I'm back with my underarm portion, what we're going to do from here is make the same chain that we made that reached all the way up to mid collarbone. So for me, I made a chain of 12. So over here, I'm gonna make a chain of 12. And then from there, we're going to do our back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for our neckline. So what we're gonna do after we make our chain is do a slip stitch row, a back loop half double crochet row, and then make our way all the way across. And then I will meet you guys back so that we can do our underarm portion together. All right, so I'm back and I have finished up the back portion of my back panel and I have also finished up the underarm. But this underarm is actually going to be done exactly the same way as the front panel. So just as a really quick refresher, we're gonna start by inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made along this side. And then we're going to do the first half of our decreases, which that's going to be back loop half double crochets that end on a decrease of three. And then a back loop slip stitch row that starts with a decrease of two for the same amount of rows as the second half of our underarm portion on this side. And once we have that same amount of rows, we're gonna finish off our back panel with our second underarm portion. And how that's going to be is we're gonna be putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, ending with a decrease of two, and then a back loop slip stitch row with no decreases. And we wanna make sure that we end up having the same amount of rows on both sides. And once we do, go ahead and do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that both our front and our back panel are all finished up, right before we seam them together, we're going to need to single crochet across the tops of both the front and the back just to clean it up to make going in with our collar a little bit easier. So just as a refresher, so I am gonna be starting with my front panel, even though both the front and the back panel are going to be done exactly the same way. I'm just gonna show you guys the front because we need to insert our stitch marker into that middle stitch. But first things first, we're gonna start by inserting our hook into that top corner stitch insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now what we're gonna do from here is one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then two single crochet into every side half double. So let's get that started. Everyone's first side row should be the side slip stitch row right here. So what I'm gonna do is find that top loop. It could be the same loop that our chain is in. Insert your hook with just one single crochet. And now that we have that, our following row should be a side half double crochet row. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop with two single crochets. So insert into that top loop with a single and then into that same top loop with another single crochet. So we should have taken up two rows, but all together we should have one, two, three stitches finished up. Let's do the next one. Now our following side row should be the side slip stitch row. So find that top loop Insert your hook with one single crochet. 
And then our following side row should be a side half double, so find that top loop, and then insert with two single crochets. So here is one, and then into that same top loop, here is my second. And we're going to continue on doing that, making our way all the way down until we reach our last side half double crochet row, right before our middle row. All right, so we have just single crocheted our way all the way down. I have just worked into my side half double crochet right before my middle row. Now, our middle row is still gonna have just one single crochet into there, but we are gonna need to insert our stitch marker into that stitch. So find the top loop for our middle row, insert your hook with just one single crochet, and then insert your stitch marker into that stitch. And then once we have that, we're gonna continue to put two single crochet into every side half double, one single crochet into every side slip stitch row until we reach this top corner and then do a chain up of one and cut. Then we're gonna be doing the same thing into the back panel. So insert your hook into the top corner stitch and then we're going to repeat one single crochet into every side slip stitch, two single crochet into every side half double, making our way all the way across. We don't need to insert our stitch marker into the middle row. I'll meet you guys back once when we have single crochet across both of our panels. So we have just finished up single crocheting across the tops of both of our panels and now we can seam everything together. So let's first make sure that everything is flipped right side out. So all I did was that I placed my back panel down with the ribbing face down and then my front panel on top of my back panel with the ribbing face up. And now from here we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both our front and our back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook. Pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another slip stitch row, so let's get this started. Start by finding this first available stitch into the front panel, and then we're going to insert only in through that front loop. Next, we're going to find that next available stitch into the back panel, and insert only in through that back loop. Once we have that, we should have three loops on our hook, so just yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. That's how we do one of our seams, let's do another one. Insert our hook into that following stitch's front loop within the front panel, and then into that following stitch's back loop within the back panel. Yarn over, pull through all three, and that's basically it. We're just gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, go ahead, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so I am back, and I have just finished up seaming everything together, and now we're gonna get started on our collar. So first things first, we're going to need to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, meaning we're looking at the front panel, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into any stitch along the right side of our front panel, the width that we would like for our collar to be, keeping in mind that it does need to be in multiples of three. Now we are not going to be counting that middle stitch, and then we also need to be inserting our hook into that stitch's front loop. So I've actually inserted my hook into that ninth stitch from my middle stitch marker, and that's just about two inches or five centimeters. So let's just count that out together. Remember, I didn't count that middle stitch. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now from here, we're gonna work on our first half double crochet row. So we're gonna insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then we're going to start with a chain two that doesn't count as a stitch because we just need the height. Now from here, we're going to be putting one front loop half double crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way down until we reach our stitch marker. Now we're going to start by inserting our first half double crochet into that same front loop that our chain two is in, because remember that chain two does not count as a stitch. So there's my first stitch. Let's do the next one. Yarn over into that following stitch insert your hook in through that front loop only, and then half double crochet. Now I'm going to continue until I have a total of nine half double crochets, making sure that we are not working into that middle stitch. All right, so now that we've put one front loop half double crochet into every stitch, we need to connect it into the base. So what we're actually going to do is skip that middle stitch. Nothing is gonna be worked into there, and then we're gonna count up the next two available stitches. So remember, we're going to skip, count up one, count up two. Into that second stitch, we're going to insert our hook only in through that front loop, yarn over, and pull through everything on our hook, and that is how we connect our half double crochet row. 
Now from here, we do need to work our way up to the following row. So we're just gonna find that next available stitch into the front panel and then insert again, only in through that front loop. Yarn over, pull through everything and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, we're gonna continue to do our back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows since we should already be experts, making our way all the way up until we reach this top corner and the last row that we should be doing should be a back loop slip stitch row and making sure that we are connecting it into the base the same way that we have just done. So into the front loops only. I'll meet you guys back once we reach this top corner over here. All right, so I am back and I have made my way all the way up to this corner with my back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows. Now from here, we're going to continue on with our back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows until we get a band that can reach up and over our shoulder and can reach the corner stitch within the back panel. So everyone's last row should have been a back loop slip stitch row. So all we're gonna do from here is just chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double into every stitch. At the end of that row, chain one, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then just continue on with that, making sure that we end on a half double crochet row once we have the length. I'll meet you guys back to let you guys know how many rows I end up having and then how we're gonna connect it into the back. All right, so I'm back and I've just finished up the strap portion of my collar. Now counting from our first half double crochet row, I have a total of 31 rows and just measuring this portion right here that's not attached to the base, this is just about four and a half inches or 12 centimeters unstretched. Now I should have all ended right after a half double crochet row. So what we're gonna do from here is slip stitch it into the base and then start our slip stitch row. So taking a look at our back panel, we're just going to take our strap and fold it. And then we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that corner stitch within the back panel, yarn over and pull through everything to connect it. But once when it's connected, we are also going to flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then from there, at the end of the row, chain two, flip our work and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Once we reach the base, we're gonna connect it into the base the same way that we have been doing for the entirety of the front panel. And then from there, just continue to repeat those two rows, making our way all the way across our back panel. Now the last row that should be worked should be a back loop slip stitch row into that corner stitch, and then I will meet you back. So I've just made my way all the way across my back panel. And now from here, we're going to continue to do our back loop half double crochet and back loop slip stitch rows for the same amount of rows that we have for our strap along this side. Once we have that all finished up, I will meet you guys back to show you how we're gonna connect it into the front panel. All right, so I am back. I've just finished up my strap. And now from here, we're gonna connect it into this corner within the front panel, the same way that we connected it within the back panel. So we should have all ended right after a half double crochet row. I'm gonna insert my hook into this top corner stitch with a slip stitch to connect it. I'm going to flip my work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, I'm gonna be repeating my back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet rows, making sure that I'm connecting it into the base the same way that we have been doing until I reach this last available stitch. And then right after that, I'll meet you guys back because we're gonna to have to work underneath the first half of our collar. All right, so I'm back and I have just made my way all the way down until I have reached my last available stitch right before the first half of our collar. Now from here, all we're gonna do is continue to repeat these two rows, so the same thing that we've been doing, but we're going to be working within those loops that we left for us, because remember when we started off that first row, we only worked into the front loops. So since this may be a little confusing, I'm just gonna show you guys the first one. So if we pull the first half of our collar down like this, you guys can see that we have these available stitches right over here. Those are the back loops that we're gonna be working into. So since the last row that we should have worked, should have been a half double crochet. I'm just gonna find that next available stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then we're gonna do our back loop slip stitch row. And then that's basically it. Just continue to do our back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet rows into these available stitches underneath the collar. And then I'll meet you guys back once we reach our stitch marker stitch, making sure that we're not working into that middle stitch. All right, so I have continued my back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows, making my way all the way down until I have reached my stitch marker stitch. And now we're going to seam it 
to the other half of the back of our collar, so the easiest way to do this is to start by flipping it wrong side out. So now that my work is flipped wrong side out, we're now going to get started with our seam. So we're gonna start by inserting our hook into that first available stitch into the collar, and then we're gonna find those back loops that we left when we connected our collar into the base when we started off this piece. Now this is my middle stitch right here, so I'm gonna find that following stitches back loop. I'm gonna insert my hook into there and then single crochet them together. Just like that, let's do that again. Into that next stitch, insert your hook. We're gonna find that next stitch's back loop within the back panel. Insert our hook into there and then single crochet and then that's it. We're gonna to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and when we don't, go ahead and do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I am back. I have just finished up seaming the collar and the last thing that we're gonna to have to do is our underarm detail. As you guys can see, I have already done a little bit of mine. Now our underarm detail is gonna be done into two sections, but they're gonna be done exactly the same way. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to do the first one and then let you guys repeat on the other side of this underarm portion and then for the other underarm as well. So we're first going to want to make sure that our work is slipped right side out. Next, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. This is my side seam right here. I'm going to insert my hook into there, insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side half double, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, working up my underarm. And then we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up until we reach the collar. Once when we do, I will meet you guys back so that we can single crochet into the bottom of the collar. All right, so I've just made my way all the way up with my single crochet row, and as you guys can see, I have inserted my stitch marker into that last stitch that we made. We're gonna need to insert our stitch marker into there so that we know what stitch is going to be our base once we get started with our back loop slip stitches. But once we have this, we're going to start working into the bottom of our collar. So when it comes to working into the bottom of our collar, we're going to continue on with the stitch sequence of two single crochets into every side half double, and one single crochet into every side slip stitch row for the width that we would like for our underarm detail to be. Now, keeping in mind that we don't want this to be too tall because this is gonna be right where our underarm is, I want mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters. So I'm gonna start by doing five single crochets and that sequence is going to be two single crochets into my following side half double, one single crochet into my side slip stitch and then two more single crochets into that following side half double. So I am going to be inserting my hook into here with one, and then into two, since that's a side half double, into my side slip stitch, find that top loop with just one, and then two single crochets into that next side half double. So there's one, and then there's two. Now once we have that, we're going to slip stitch all the way down our row. So we're just going to chain one and flip our work. Now we're gonna be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker, and that should be the same amount of single crochets that we did working into the bottom of our collar. So since I did a total of five stitches, I should have a total of five back loop slip stitches. And now from here, we're gonna connect it into the base, which should be my following stitch or my stitch marker stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into there, take out my stitch marker, yarn over and pull through to finish off this row. Now I do need to work my way up to the following row, which is gonna be another back loop slip stitch row. So insert my hook into that following stitch into the base and flip my work. Once when my work is flipped, I'm gonna to continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So start by finding the last stitch from our previous row, insert your hook into there, pull through everything, and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we are going to chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did, and then that's it. We aren't gonna have any increases or decreases for this section, so continue to do this, making our way all the way down until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then we are going to be repeating the same thing that we just did here on the other side. So as you guys can see, mine is already all finished up. But once when you guys finish up the second one, do not do a chain up of one and cut so that we can just seam everything together without any extra tail ends. All right, so we have just finished up both sides of our underarm detail. And doing the second one, we didn't do a chain up of one and cut, and now we're ready to seam it together. 
Now this seam is going to be the same seam as our side seam, so another outside loop slip stitch seam. So since we already know how to do that, let's just do the first one together. We're all going to start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert our hook only in through that front loop. Find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. And once we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three, and then that is it. Once we have that, go ahead and do the same thing we just did here on the other side and then do a chain up of one and cut. And now that we have just finished up both of our underarm details, we are all done. Last thing we're going to have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. All of those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch on the next one. Bye!